Hey guys, I'm Ken DeCost. We are back in the shop again this week. As you can see behind me, we have a lot going on. We have a few different projects here and let's just get started and kind of jumping right in. So first right here we have, doesn't really look like much, but it's going to be a coffee bar. So some of the pieces are actually already into finish. This lower box here is actually made from a pre-finished walnut plywood. And the upper box is made from an unfinished walnut plywood. And the reason for that is actually because we're going to have a bifold door here that will end up tucking up against the wall. And we're assuming that the homeowners are probably gonna leave this open uh, quite often. And we just wanted that nicer finished material in the upper area where it is going to be open and seen a lot more as opposed to this bottom section that is going to be behind just two standard closed doors. So imagine if you will, we have this entire unit. It's two doors on the bottom, two doors on the top. We have a filler on the right. And on the left side, we have a return panel. That's also two shaker panels and a nice crown molding at the top. You walk over, you open up the bifold door. You have this beautiful walnut cabinet, a beautiful walnut countertop and a nice sink. The idea of this is to kind of be a wet bar, but more of a coffee bar. This is going into the master bedroom unit of this home. So it's just something there for the homeowners first thing in the morning when they wake up. So then in the upper portion, we will have some lighting so that they can flip a switch and have some nice lighting inside this unit so they can see what they're doing. There'll also be several adjustable shelving and we set the shelving back um, about 12 inches. So that way you're not trying to work at your coffee station or sink and have a shelf be right in your face. So just make sure to step them back a little bit so there's a little more room to work in here, making it a little bit more comfortable. The lower section here, because there's going to be a lot of plumbing, um, we just have one larger shelf. And due to the width of this span, it's about 42 inches wide. We ended up doubling up our shelf thickness so that we didn't get any sag and we didn't need any vertical supports in the middle. So with this shelf, it's just placed in, it's not edge banded yet. But one thing to consider when using pre-finished material is that it can scratch really easily. So when I was just putting this shelf into the cabinet, you can see here, I ended up scratching it quite a bit. And that was just due to a small piece of debris that was on the inside edge of that shelf that I didn't catch when putting the shelf in. So now this panel will have to be replaced, which is causing us a little bit more work. It is something to consider when using pre-finished pieces. So moving right along here, we have a few pieces for our Project 170. And first we come to a vanity. Just a square floating rectangular box. And there's a couple of uh, cool little features about this vanity. And it's not just this vanity, there's actually two of the same vanities um, going in this unit. One is going to be, I wish I had the samples here, this really nice green color. And the other is going to be a bit of a darker blue. They're a little bit bold, but they're going to look great in this space. If you've been following along on the NS Builders Instagram, you would have seen that Nick posted a photorealistic rendering of this vanity and it looks killer. It's a bold color in this space and it looks great. So getting back to the actual fabrication of this vanity, we approached this in um, a slightly different manner than we typically would. Because the outsides are going to be painted and we wanted to keep the inside the pre-finished material, we were experimenting with this flat pack design to see if we can't end up shipping some of these out. So, you know, in the future, we may be able to offer these vanities or uh, another similar type of furniture in this flat pack design. It's easy to ship and easy to assemble. So who knows? Who knows what the future holds, Doug? Do you? I don't. So because this vanity is going to be floating, we're going to support it by using a couple of these steel brackets. Now the way these work is before we add board to the walls, this screws directly into the framing, allowing this portion to come in and support the underside of our vanity. So we're gonna have two of those on this vanity, one tucked in each corner as far as we can. You'll notice that we haven't cut the holes for those yet because the brackets actually aren't installed in the field yet. Once we have an exact location on those, we'll go ahead and cut in for those brackets, but we'll probably just end up waiting until we're in the field. Another thing with the back of this cabinet, we're doing an in-wall P-trap. So the drain will just come down from the sink and return straight back into the wall There'll be an access panel in the back allowing us to get to that P-trap if we ever need to service the sink. 
This allows us to have a little bit more room on the inside of this vanity. The hardware chosen for this vanity is what's called an edge pole. And we need to make sure that we're flush on the back as well as the sides. So we wanna make sure that all of our cutting is done prior to finish so that we're not risking damaging the finish when cutting in for the poles afterwards. Lastly, we have this flush mounted outlet. So typically in the past, we have used a brand called Truefig. Now they make some really great adjustable plates for this type of application. However, they didn't make a three gang and that's what we required here in this application. So we kicked around a few other options and ultimately used a regular Decora plate so this space here will be for the actual receptacle box and the receptacles themselves, allowing us to mount our plate onto the box while keeping it flush with the face of our cabinet side. Now these plates are removable. There's going to be a few different ways to get this off. Now the outlet plate will come off once the receptacles are in. It may be a bit trickier than a standard outlet where you don't have the room to just grab the edge and separate the two pieces. So we can either use a small suction cup that actually comes with some of the other outlets that are similar to this, or we can go ahead and modify this plate to receive some magnets so that we do just have to pull it right off. So that's about it for this vanity. And now we can move on to what is going to be the wardrobe cabinetry. We actually used a newer kind of veneer for us, typically we're using just raw veneers, but this particular veneer is already dyed. It is still a natural product. The company that makes this veneer is known for their engineered, which are man-made veneers. But like I said, in this case, it's actually a natural product that's just dyed through. The dye in this vanity is this super cool gray color. We're actually going to be finishing this with a very low, just a 5% sheen. So the color is not gonna change all that much. And this is a wardrobe, right? So what are you gonna put in there? You're gonna hang a bunch of clothes. You're gonna store a bunch of clothes folded. So on the lower section here, you can see we have four very large drawers and then what appears to be two smaller drawers. But actually, it's only one smaller drawer. This part here is just a full height door. This is for your longer hanging clothes, maybe a long jacket. So what we did on the face of this door was to keep the same look and the reveals consistent. We added a kerf across the face of this door, but because this is dyed veneer, you know, getting that kerf to match was going to be difficult. It would have been a process that would have to be done in finishing and might not come out the exact way that we want. Do we have that cutoff piece kicking around still? So this is a section cut off of what this door actually looked like. So across the face of this door, you can see we ran a pretty big dado here. And basically we made our own solid stock with thin strips of veneer. We built it up to about an inch worth of material. And if you look close, you can see that we had drawn our lines of where we wanted our kerf to land. Before we veneered the face of these, we added that dado, filled it with our made up veneer stock. And then we went ahead and veneered the face and the back. Once we had that all set up, we were able to go back, follow our lines and cut this kerf right in there. So what that final res result will give you, if you wanna come in and take a quick look over here, zoomed in, you can see that our veneer comes up the face and basically waterfalls or returns right back into this kerf. And it does that on both sides, giving us the same graining, the same coloring, everything. There's no issues later on in finishing, trying to match anything. Um, and I said thing about 4,000 times. In the first cabinet, this is going to be just wide open storage, hanging storage with the shelf above. Closet rods are not quite in yet. But in this middle cabinet, we've kind of split it up a little bit. So on one side, you still have additional hanging storage with more storage above. And then on the right side, we have some additional adjustable shelving so you can store more folded clothes or linens, whatever you may need to store inside of here. Another thing that you might have noticed that looks a little bit weird or funny about this cabinet is up here at the top where the end panels hang proud. Well, when we get this installed, they're actually not going to hang proud. 
they're gonna be on the same plane as the doors. This space here is actually gonna be transferred down on the bottom to give us a four inch toe kick. Since we're just set up here in the shop on the floor, our end panels do run proud. And speaking of end panels, that brings us over to our last kind of bit on this wardrobe. These two panels here, once we get these installed on site, they're actually just gonna be kind of decorative wall panels. And we will have about a quarter inch gap between the two, giving them a little bit of space and separation. That gap is going to look a lot like the kerf on the door for the long hanging storage. Where this unit is going to live in the house, there's actually a set of stairs right about where I'm standing. And the only thing separating this up being up on the second floor from the first floor is just the actual floor joist. So if you imagine the space behind me would actually be open from the first floor level all the way up to the ceiling. So this edge of our wall panel is going to align with the edge of cabinetry directly below that also gets this same veneer. And that'll be the entryway cabinet. And we'll catch that one on a future episode. So now we've given you a quick walkthrough of what we have going on in the shop this week. Tune back in next week where we'll have a little bit more progress made on all of these projects, as well as introduce a few new projects into the mix. So for us in our shop here, we do all this veneering in-house. So basically we're just buying um, very thin, paper thin sheets of the veneer and gluing it up to our own substrates. Some of our panels are three quarters, some of them are one inch. So we have different size thicknesses that we need. So when it comes to making the curve cut in the door, like I showed you a little while ago, I'm curious to know, how would you guys have approached that? Would you have just done it in finish and have the finisher kind of touch up that color? And please feel free to drop us some comments and of course, subscribe to the channel and we'll catch you guys next week. Well, I'm sorry, am I boring you? <laughs> Oh my God, Doug. <clears throat> it's not me. It wasn't me, it was Doug. Projects, what, what? Project numbers, 170? <clears throat> and all I can think about now is the <whistles> Now Mike's gonna make the blooper reel. What do they call that? <whistles> Drawing a blank. Video? Flat pack panel. Flat, flat it's pack it's package. <clears throat> so who, why do I do that? <clears throat> <clears throat> what do I f say about that then? <clears throat> I feel like I'm leading in for another line and then I got nothing. Taller hanging. So since we, what this door actually looked like, why are you laughing at me? I'm not laughing. Because <laughs> I burped.